we have a few minutes for uh, questions. Please, please, Mr. Ambassador. Former Ambassador to France. Thank you, Thierry. Uh, Minister Fahmi, welcome to Abu Dhabi. My name is Ali Ahmed, I'm from uh, Ministry of UAE. Uh, you mentioned an active foreign policy. Um, if we can take this a step further, and uh, in regard to the Abrahamic Accord, which is the peace treaty UAE and Israel, Egyptians were the first to shook hands with the Israelis. Whether it is a warm peace, whether it's a ceasefire, uh, that's not my questions, but UAE doesn't share border with Israel. We have no, we never had war with the Israelis. How would we go further from your perspective without losing the Arab public opinion, without being provocative, uh, because it seems like it doesn't take much <laughs> Any small details, any small celebration, anything would be provocative to millions of Arabs. From your perspective, how can we act with that from an act of foreign policy? Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Ambassador, for the question. I'm glad you mentioned this because there's no... You can't overemphasize that the Palestinian issue, per se, is a very emotional issue throughout the Arab world. Uh, and therefore, reactions to it tend to be very strong in, in either way. Any movement on it leads to one form of reaction. You're also correct in saying we signed a peace agreement with Israel first, and we had part of it was the normalization part, although it didn't grow uh, as, as quickly at the, at the popular level. My point is the following, and I've said this to my Palestinian colleagues. I understand your concern. I understand your fear, but focus on building your case rather than on criticizing somebody. Because in the case of those who signed the accord, even if you don't agree with them, they've all committed to helping establish and support a Palestinian state. So my recommendation to Arabs, be a bit sensitive to steps that you take. And I want to compliment you for the focus on freezing the settlement activity just before the, the, uh, the annexation, excuse me, uh, just before the Abraham Accords. But you will have to face that this is sensitive, you'll get some criticism. I would tell my Arab colleagues, I would tell the Palestinians, focus, put out the tenets of the peace process, come up with ideas on how to move forward politically. Don't let the political process die. I don't see today, because of the coalition in Israel, which is very, very strange, but it also reflects a search for identity after five elections. Uh, I don't see significant early progress on the peace process. But Palestinians and Arabs should not let the Palestinian rights die until we find an opening here. So I, I, again, it's all a call for activism. Being sensitive to others, sure, but a country decided to take a step. That's the national right of that country. Let's take advantage of uh, the advantages where they exist and let's take it as an opportunity to emphasize our case. Thank you very much. I can take one question and then we have to stop. So who would like uh, to intervene? I don't see, is it hard for me to see? Uh, well, Karl Kaiser. Germany, Germany and US. Uh, I would like to come back to a problem that you mentioned, which is so important for the Europeans too, that's Libya. Now, for the Europeans, obviously it's central. There's the migration problem, there's the political stability, there's the oil question, but it's extremely important for you as a neighbor. So how do you see it evolving given the involvement also of some outside powers, which has been very important? Well, to be very candid and straightforward, I actually feel that outside powers who are uh, in facilitating 
or supporting the inclusion of outside military forces are taking detrimental steps in the process. Outside powers who are trying to help push the political process, uh, are, it's understandable because you had in Libya a failed state. And presently now they're trying to agree on how you create a leader, how you actually create a state. So Libya will require international support to reach a political solution. I support that, but I don't believe that uh, fighting the military battle with uh, outside powers is in any way uh, helpful. And I can, without exaggerating, that could very easily lead to regional conflicts of a military nature, and I don't support that. So let's try to get the Libyans to the ballot boxes. Let's try to get them to establish a government with a unified uh, military and uh, security forces. Uh, they, will have, they will stumble. Let's help them uh, as they stumble in, the, in that process. But sending in more troops, foreign troops or fighters is frankly not only illegal, it's immoral. Well, thank you very much, Nabil. Unfortunately, the best things uh, have to come to an end. In fact, it is a very good introduction to the rest uh, of the day, and particularly the next uh, session, uh, which uh, has to do with the uh, uh, Middle East and the outside uh, powers. So thank you very uh, much again. And we move now to the next uh, session. And we are on time. Thank you very much. Thank you.